Welcome back to Real Life Reviews and in this review we're going to take a bit of a look at Innovate's Trail Talon 290. Now this review is going to take a slightly different track, no pun intended, to previous reviews. Video 1, because this is going to be a two-part set of videos, video 1 is going to be an unboxing and a look at the features on this shoe. I'm then going to go away knock in a good hundred miles in the shoe and come back with video two and what I think of it. There's something else that's different about this review and that's the process. Normally speaking I would get some kit, use it, review it, post it and there we are. What I've done here is I've created a sort of wish list of what I want from a training shoe, gone to a company and said which shoe would you recommend I get to satisfy these needs? And I, I will say, I've bought this shoe. I got the recommendation, so this hasn't come from Innovate as a freebie for me to review. What were my criteria for this? Well, I'm asking for, from the company that is really born out of trail running, I'm asking for a shoe that is good on hard-packed, rocky, ultra-marathon distance, sandy, dusty terrain. So, and I specifically said, for example, Marathon de Sable. So I made it very clear what I wanted the shoe to do. I was also specific in little things like, it must be able to take stitching for Velcro for an ultra marathon desert type gaiter uh, to be attached to the shoe. So I was very, very precise. The first interesting thing from Innovate is that when they replied and made their recommendation, they did not recommend the Terra Ultra G260, which is their latest graphene uh, ultra trail shoe. They said Trail Talon 290. So let's get round to unboxing. Here we go then. Here's the box. Very simple. Open it up inside and we have the Trail Talon. Let's get rid of the box. And let's look at the shoe and invariably one of the first things we look at when we look at a new shoe it's the sole. What have we got on the sole? Well to start with we have familiar triangular lugs. Those of you that have seen uh, Innovates before whether it's the Terra Claws, the, the Trail Rock, whatever you will recognize that type of pattern. What you will see that's different to many is that the lugs if I get a bit closer the lugs themselves have got their own individualized little bit of grip and pattern to them. If I head for something like the TerraClaw 250, which I absolutely love, and you look at those, they are dead smooth. So we do have some grip there actually on the lug itself. The lugs are four millimeters. So if I just try and get a bit of an angle there, they're not particularly deep and they're not going to grip into muddy, grassy ground particularly well, particularly wet ground. However, don't forget, we didn't ask for that, so we wouldn't expect it to. We would buy a different shoe. So that's the lugs. The next thing you'll notice on there is that there are three colours to the sole material. So we have the dark blue at the back, which is the toughest of the colours, and the colours are representing different toughness and softness to the sole itself. So we've got the toughest on the heel, where you're making heel impact and pounding the ground. We've got the softest on the outside for greater feel and innovate, say, security as, of grip. It's the grippiest of it all. And then in the middle with the light blue, we've got a medium compound grippy sole material. It is worth noting at this point that if you look closely, and you might not be able to see this on video, but if we look at the light blue, you can see we do have the dynamic fascia band in this shoe still. Now Innovate don't make a big deal about it, but it is there. And for those of you that don't know, the dynamic fascia band is their system whereby they're trying to replicate the ligaments and tendons in the foot that when, when you bend and you get, the, you get the recall and the rebound and it works with the foot. We saw this first, or I saw this first in the TerraClaw 250. Moving from the sole to the midsole, we have Innovate's two-piece Powerflow midsole 
And Innovate are claiming something quite quite special here because they're in, they're claiming an increase in shock absorption and an increase in energy return. Now, those two don't necessarily go hand in hand. If you increase shock absorption, often you're naturally reducing energy rebound and vice versa. However, Innovate are claiming a 10% increase over normal midsoles in terms of shock absorption and a 15% increase in terms of energy return. If they've managed that, yeah, that's a great call. So we'll have a look, we'll wear the shoe and we'll see what we think about that when it comes to it. The drop in this shoe, heel to toe, is eight millimeters. That's a 19 millimeter stack at the rear and an 11 millimeter stack towards the fore. Um, that's, not, that's pretty normal. Often you'll get as high as a 22 millimeter stack in the heel and that will often give you a little bit more absorption, but the quality of the, the, the bedding here uh, is gonna come out. So again, we need to wear the shoe and see how effective that is. But in terms of drop and stack, there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary. And if anything, it might be slightly low in stack, but normal in drop, or even a little high in some people. Some people like four to five mil for off-road running. Continuing our move round to the top of the shoe, you will see a very plastic cage, my terming, the plastic cage, but it innovates what they call their adapter fit technology. And the intention here is that this uh, is designed to adapt to your foot as your foot swells over longer distances. So for ultra runners, this should be ideal. Let's wait and see. I'll try and put some longer runs in and see how my feet cope with the shoe. Staying on the top, at the front we have very definitely a beefed up toe area for protection and I can see without even wearing the shoe that that is going to be a benefit. I know when I get tired on longer runs I've often clipped my toes against a piece of rock or a stone or kicked something as my feet are starting to draggle and I'm draggle, drag and I'm getting that much lower gait and step through. So I like the look of the toe box and the other thing I would mention at the moment is the width of the shoe. Um, Innovate tell me um, that this is what they call a four out of five for width. Now that is exactly the same as my Terraclaw two, uh, 250 and I think it's perfect. I don't get on with tight, narrow shoes particularly. And if you've seen my review of Solomon Speedcross 4, uh, you will know that. So again, I'm hoping that the width here, I don't have particularly wide feet, but I don't like narrow shoes. And I'm hoping that the combination of the width and this adapter fit technology is gonna suit my feet well over the longer distances. So what more can we say about this shoe? Not a lot. The upper is, Innovate say, lighter and more breathable than the previous model. We would hope so as technology moves on. And all that remains for me to do now is to get out into the big outdoors and get some miles in and see what this shoe is like on hard packed, dry ground over longish distance runs. If you've liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up and share. If you do want to buy this shoe, well, there's a link to Wiggle in the description down below and there's some great deals off there at the moment and they do stock, the shoe is in stock as the video is produced. It's where I bought this one from. Um, if you buy through our website and Wiggle, Real Life Reviews gets a tiny proportion of what you spend to help keep the channel going. So there's a link to our website with other affiliates on in the corner down there. If you haven't yet subscribed, well, click on the picture there. If you want to see the video of the Terraclaw 250, well, just up there. And I mentioned Solomon Speedcross 4, well, that's up there. Thank you so much for watching.